Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 44 of Enigmatic S6 Expert. I have been quite busy over the last couple of days. This is uh, a few days later since the last episode and I've been doing a bunch of stuff. Um, the main thing that I've been doing, actually I've been doing two main things. One is I have all of the ingredients here needed to make the automated iridescent uh, uh, altar, that's what it's called. Uh, this was quite complicated. Most of these are not too bad. Uh, this was pretty complicated to make the automated iridescent altar starlight input port. Starlight, yeah, that's what it's called. Um, so if we look at that, um, this is the recipe. So all of this stuff I had, uh, it's steadfast wheel. I had to make a little bit more of that, it wasn't too bad. Um, I had a bunch of these, we can make that. Uh, I had to make this guy, which is this, which is also not too bad, air reagent. Um, I had to set up uh, the, t the tarantula hook with my Drigme. Um, but other than that, it was pretty straightforward to make all of this stuff. The really complicated thing was this guy. Everything is easy except for this and this. This needed all of the bright constellations, like a um, celestial crystal attuned to each of the bright ones. And then this one needed a, a celestial crystal attuned to each of the dim uh what are those called? Constellations. That took maybe 45 minutes just to attune all of those. I had to like sleep and because they're not always visible. So you had to do some of them and then sleep and then wait and then uh, pass the daytime with this guy. Took me about 45 minutes. Um, and yeah, I have a, a few more here which I can pick up. This is where I was making the celestial crystals. But yeah, that's now done. And yeah, other than that, everything else was pretty straightforward. Um, the, the FE input port was kind of complicated too. So that needed an alternate induction provider, which, um, this is the recipe I was using. So it needed an elite in like four elites and eight of no, 16 of these. And you know, it took quite a lot of resources to make. Um, so one thing I did while I was doing that, because I needed a lot of, um, uh, refined osmium. No, what is it called? Enriched. No, what is it called? Refined obsidian. Yeah, this thing. It needed a lot of that. And um, so I ended up setting up all of these machines to actually automate like the refined obsidian, uh, enriched obsidian, right? So that we don't have to keep requesting it from the system because that was very, going very slow. Uh, another thing I had to do was uh, we needed a lot of Coke bricks for something. Um, so I made this little machine in Create to uh, get us a lot of Coke brick. Um, I think you just need a coke brick actually. It was just part of the recipe. Oh, why is it still coming in? That's weird. It should have stopped. Uh, 256. It should be on. Okay, that's on, but then why is it coming in? I'm very confused. Where's it coming from? <laughs> Uh, I'm confused. Uh, I'm going to have to figure that one out, but for now I'm going to ignore it and hopefully it's not a problem. Okay. I think there was a bug when this was down. It, it wasn't on, but it was like still making stuff somehow. So I feel like now it's not coming through anymore. I don't know. That was very weird. Anyway. Um, yeah, I have got all the ingredients ready to make the automated iridescent altar. And the other thing I've got all the ingredients for is, uh, down here. Can I, yeah. is, uh, all the ingredients for, here they are here. This is for the industrial deuterium plant because, uh, one of our next quests or one of our next, uh, things that we have to work towards is uh, lots of power so that we can make antimatter. And uh, yeah, so I have to make this and I have to make that. Um, so this thing has to go in the water. I'm planning to put it just inside here. You can see here if I hold this where it's gonna go, right there. Um, yeah, I have all of the ingredients ready to do that. But first of all, let's get all of the, can I get up there? Let's get all of the ingredients we need. Uh, I mean, we have the ingredients we need. Let's get this thing building. So first of all, I'm going to just take this down because um, 
it's going to just void everything and I don't really want it to avoid everything. Um, I want to be able to keep all of this stuff because uh, it's useful. And I don't want to have to make it all again. Uh, let's take that out. We need that. It's supposed to go in here. And once I put that in here, actually, we can verify that I have all the ingredients with the book. So there we go. You can see everything is green. Let's just get rid of this liquid starlight. I can just use uh, cobble to get rid of it just because I have plenty of liquid starlight. I don't need to worry about saving it. And then, yeah, let me just break everything and tear it all down and then we'll be back. Okay, uh, maybe I could just fill in this hole here. And there we go, that's the ground complete. So let's um, see, this is where it's going to go. Like that, it's mostly, like I've moved it over a bit further from where the, um, where the old one used to be. It's a little bit further towards the, the right here. Uh, maybe we'll fill in this with something, I'm not too sure. But yeah, that's where it's gonna go. So let's put that back in there. Let's get some gunpowder and put it in there. Uh, yeah, this is all of the stuff I collected. Uh, we have our co collector crystals and stuff like that. So those will be used later on. We'll, I'll reassemble everything again. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything. We should be ready to go. Uh, let's go replace solid with any. We won't keep anything there. But I think we could just press go and no, go and it should start going. Why isn't it going? Go. There it goes. All right, it's finished. So now it should be, yes, it seems to have assembled everything. That's great. All right, so yeah, it's working and this is all working. Uh, all right, it looks really cool. So I might have to um, set up a path or something because it's kind of annoying to get here. Uh, I have to like, maybe we could go down here and through the middle or something. No, that's kind of weird too. I don't know, anyway, I'll think of something. Um, now the thing is we have to get uh, starlight into these somehow. I think we do it by uh, Maybe we could do it with What are they called collector? No Not the collector crystals, but the uh, their lenses. Maybe these ones can work uh, Let's see There and is it called the binding I forget what they call the every tool has a different Every mod has a different name for their tool. Linking tool, there we go. So let's try linking that with that. It says it's linked. Uh, but it's not doing anything. Let's try one of these guys. Uh, I'll just put it up here for now. And we'll link it as well. Oh, no, right click, link. Uh, okay, it is getting started. Okay, so this looks to be the way that we should do it. I'll build four of these, I guess, one for each. I mean, theoretically, I could link it to multiple, right? That would just make it go slower. Uh, it's not doing anything. If I just link it to one, does it work again? It only works if I link it to one, okay. So yeah, I think what I'll have to do is build four of those, actually build four of those structures so that it works all the time and um, somehow put them around here. Maybe I can put some up here. I might have to move my telescope again. Uh, yeah, so we'll have to do that. 
And then we'll have to set up the recipes. Uh, so what does it actually need again? Uh, let's see, automated iridescent altar. And there. So it'll need power and starlight, and then we can make these. The main thing I wanted it for is to make these, cause I'm gonna, no, not Elven. Uh, oh, so this one, I'm going to need a bunch of these. Uh, we're going to need a bunch, oh, there it is. The Gaia Mana Spreader. I wanna get a bunch of this. So um, does 50 S mean it only needs 50? Like here, it's already got several hundred, right? If it only needs 50, that's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, so this will be good for making uh, a bunch of Gaia mana spreaders. I guess we also need the Elven mana spreaders to make the Gaia ones. Um, we can also make a bunch of other stuff. So this will be good for making the stars. Uh, Eva, what's your, how do you know that it's, oh, is it with different? Yeah, it's with different reagents, interesting. Okay, and also obviously making the, the lenses too. That'll be much easier now that we can automate them. So yeah, this is going to be handy uh, as we get further on into the pack and we need lots of mana, especially for, uh, I don't know why I only just recently got this quest. Especially once we get to uh, the Stellar Neutron Activator. This needs uh, a bunch of mana in order to function. So we, I'm going to want to have Gaia Mana Spreaders for that. Yeah, now I'm going to make this. Since we have all of the ingredients, we may as well get started on it as well. Uh, yeah, that should be fine, I think. So you can start going. Uh, yeah, let's let's have a look at it. Okay, just finished, and that's every single piece of equipment used up. So, yep, there we go, that also looks good. Uh, for some reason, that doesn't look right. It didn't form up properly. Oh! <laughs> Oops, that's not right. There, okay. I guess we can just uh, manually fix these up. Something about the the way they get placed, it doesn't seem to join properly. These ones all look right. Okay, so now to, in order to use these, it needs uh, power, so power goes in there. Uh, the output comes out there. Uh, over here, we put in, uh, I think we put water, maybe, something. Um, and then in here, we put molten sulfur. And then over here, we put rotational power, 256. Uh, RPM it has to be so if we have a look at the deuterium Here it tells us like what you get out of it, right? Uh, so we yeah, we put in forge energy molten sulfur. Oh, it's pressure. That's right We have to put a compressor there to get pr uh, compressed air and yeah 256 rotation and then we get lots and lots of liquid deuterium out of it so it needs quite a lot of power. I think it is possible to run it off of solar panels. Uh, obviously that would only work during the night time. So maybe we have to do something a bit different and get the power to it from our uh, reactors because we're also gonna have to make the Starlight Neutron, Stellar Neutron Activator. That also needs quite a lot of power. So we might make um, another reactor to run both of those things. You gotta have power to make power. And then of course up here, this guy, oh, whoa. I fell through the sky. This guy also needs power. Um, I don't know how much it needs. There's the output. Uh, and these are the inputs, fluid input. What fluid does it actually need? As far as I can tell, nothing needs fluid. Um, so that's okay, fine. The only thing is, uh, so wait, one of these guys needed yeah, the shifting star needs 
ether gas, but it needs a bucket of ether gas, not the actual fluid. So I'm not sure what the fluid input port is for. I'm going to guess nothing. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much all we need for this too. It needs forge energy. Where does the forge energy go in? Uh, I didn't see an input port for it. Was it down here? Oh, here. This must be where it goes in. Okay. So I'm not sure how much it needs there either, whether that could also be um, by the solar panels or probably better by the reactor as well. I'll make one reactor to do all three of these machines, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I think the episodes are going to be a little bit slower coming out because uh, in between like, you know, making this, I have to do a whole bunch of stuff to get all of the ingredients ready for it. And then I have to do a whole bunch more stuff to like, we got to set up these uh, crystal collectors to give it look, look, lots of starlight. Um, and we need to set up the automation stuff. I'm going to have to build another reactor. So why don't I come back once I have a reactor built and all of the starlight collectors built. And also for the deuterium plant, I'll get that set up as well with all of the bits and pieces it needs to run. And then we can go through it and see uh, how, we, how we're going. Yeah, okay, I have the Gaia Mana Spreader recipe set up. This has been um, a few days since I uh, last recorded, and I've done a bunch of stuff, including setting up this recipe. So I have, I've made one so far. The biggest thing that we are missing is, uh, well, there's a lot of stuff we're missing, but the, the main thing that I can't easily get is the Dream Cherries. Uh, everything else is relatively easy. I could get pink tulip. What do I need pink tulips for? I don't even know. Uh, I could get these easily enough. I could get magma bricks, podzol. Uh, I can make a recipe for that now. Uh, ancient saplings we can get. And obviously we can just reuse our uh, old mana spreaders. But the dream cherries are kind of difficult to get. I'm, I got one. Uh, actually, I got two. By um, So you take leaves. Uh, I don't have that many left. Oh, I don't want to use ancient leaves. Let's just take spruce leaves as an example. You chuck them through the portal of uh, to Alfheim. And you get back... What are they called? Dream leaves or something? Dreamwood leaves? Yeah. And then you break those. And sometimes you get cherries. Not, oh, actually, I got one. I, I put a stack in before and I ended up getting just two. So they're pretty rare, um, but I was thinking the easiest way would be to actually go to Alfheim, which we can't do yet until you make the, the Mead of Kvasir, which is uh, by this. So we need otherworldly honey and we need the, we need the blood of Kvasir. So luckily we had the rune set up over there before and uh, I made another blood of Kvasir. That wasn't too difficult to make. That's pretty straightforward now that we have all of this stuff. Um, yeah, we need to make the meat of Kvasir, which needed otherworldly honey, which I... Ne oh, no. Yeah, I don't have the otherworldly honey yet. Um, it needs otherworldly honey. And the way you get that is by taking otherworldly honeycomb, blaze honeycomb, and illuminating honey, which is just from a woody bee. And you do it in the ritual, then you get the otherworldly honey. The otherworldly honeycomb... Oops. Is quite difficult, actually, I found. Um, so you got to make a otherworldly bee, which is done by this recipe. So it needs a, a weird, uh, uh, what are these things called? Ritual. And then a, just a bunch of stuff. So it's once you've got the ritual set up, it's not that difficult to make. I uh, set that up over here just temporarily because I didn't need, uh, we don't, we're not going to keep this around. I'm not going to make any more. Um, and then I set up the bee. I didn't put it in the bee apiary. Because the otherworldly bee has this cool effect where it can do, um, it can make other stone out of andesite. So I had wanted to set up this system where we have block breakers and block places placing uh, andesite and picking up otherworldly uh, other stone and putting it in here. The weird thing is, I think the bee is bugged or something because it would keep getting stuck in the fire. That's its flower. It's flower is the fire, which is very weird. Um, spirit fire. So I had to get the, the fire going there. But it would just like come out of the, the hive and then it would go over to here. And then it would just sit there and do nothing forever. So I tried making this little system with a piston 
Because if you push it out of the fire, it would actually then like wake up or something and then go back into the nest and keep doing its stuff. Uh, but it didn't always work. Sometimes it would get stuck right down the bottom of the block and it would just stay there forever. So I would then like use my um, travel anchor thingy to like try and jump in there because I didn't want to escape and I would like push it around like this. Uh, but then I, I did it twice, two bees I made and both of them just like whenever I did that or not whenever, but occasionally when I did that, it would just like disappear. It wouldn't die. There was no lava. It wouldn't like run away. It would just like despawn and disappear completely. And I had to make another bee. So I ended up giving up on it. Uh, I got 10 of the otherworldly honeycombs. That's enough. Uh, and I got, ended up getting 26 otherworld stones. But I think I'm just going to tear this down and give up on the otherworldly bee because it seems to be bugged out or something. But we can now make the illuminating honeycomb, which is be which is going to be very good. Oh, the other thing, I've been very busy actually since the since we did the last thing. I've also started working on oh boy, backlog. <laughs> I also made uh, the ore mining genie with a, a dimensional mine shaft. This is actually not too difficult to make now. Uh, this is just Strigiel's higher binding. It needed a block of Isnium, and this needs a block of Isnium as well, and some other stuff. I had to make a greater Tartaric gem, which was pretty straightforward now that we have all of this stuff. Um, yeah, and then I enchanted it with unbreaking and mending, unbreaking five and mending. And then I have this little setup here with uh, that guy, which I also made, the Alf Steel Pylon, to automatically repair it. So this is set up to pull from the mine shaft anything with an, using an inspection filter that has less than 10% durability, I think I said, and then it puts it into this ender chest, and then it pulls anything with more than 90% uh, durability out of the ender chest and puts it back in there. And then over here, I have the same ender chest set up, and it basically it does the opposite. It pulls out anything less than, I think, 50%, sends it over to this open crate, which then uh, pops it on top of the pylon that repairs it. So if I toss that up there, oh, if I toss that up there, <laughs> you can see it does repair it. Am I, am I going to get it up there? I don't think I'm going to be able to get it up there to stay there. Oh, actually, I could just put it in here. Oh, it already repaired it, yeah. So anything you toss on top of the pylon, it'll get repaired and then the, the matter will replace it. Uh, and then, yeah, it, it has a vacuum module that pulls things that are full, uh, like 100% uh, or more than 90% or whatever I said, I can't remember now. And then puts it back into the ender chest here. So then it goes back there and it keeps working. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's uh, full. I've taken out um, these things, which I think are the most interesting ones. So obviously Isnium Ore, I got 50, that's pretty good. I have uh, Dimensional Chunks, I have Fluorite Chunks, Sulfur. I don't think I need Amber or th Thalassium for anything anymore, but I took them out anyway. And Ender Ore, we got 27. So uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of other ores that you get too. What I was thinking of doing is um, replacing our Create setup over here for processing uh, the output of the bees. And uh, I've got an enrichment chamber and an energized smelter and all of the upgrades for it. So I'm thinking of ripping this out and then just putting in those two um, mechanism machines and then uh, upgrading them to the factory as well. So it should be able to handle like everything that comes out of there and everything that comes out of the bees. And uh, it should be no problem at all. Um, but the other thing we were going to do before, before I do that, I'm going to set up the meat of Kvasir. Kves, <laughs> so let's um, do that. Uh, illuminating honey. No, not illuminating honey. It's uh, otherworldly honey. So it's uh, Azivius's spectral compulsion, which is not that one. I have it set up here. Yeah, there we go. And we needed eight of these. Oh, wait, what am I doing? Oh, there. <laughs> eight of these. And four of those. And, oh, actually, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to manually place this once those are all in place. We could just use this machine to automatically get everything going for us. Oh, I need more sacrificial bowls. Uh, let's put a few more around. We definitely don't need that many. 
Uh, that's not set up to bind to it, is it? So let me just manually place these ones. Uh, if we need to set up a recipe for anything, uh, we can do that. So far, we only have these two things. There we go. We got the uh, otherworldly honey. We only need the one bottle, so that's all we have to get. And then uh, we need to set up... So we need to use the thermopneumatic processing plant. The centrifugal separator will take out the honey from the bottle. Now this is just going to be temporary because we don't need it to last forever. Let's get a universal cable so we can get some power to it. Oops. Uh, oh, Enderman. Okay, he's going to be back. Uh, so power. Why have I got an iron crafter? Like so, we put the honey bottle there, like so, and then we put our thermopneumatic processing plant there, and I think we need pressure for it. Do I have any? Oh, I do, yeah, okay. Uh, pressure tube, Let's hook that up, like, oh, why can't I connect to it? Why was it coming out? Oh, it's probably got um, thermal lagging on there, yeah. There we go. Okay, so that should have lots of pressure. And then we want to output the otherworldly honey. Output enabled. There we go. Uh, yes, and then we want to put you there, and I think it needs temperature. Yeah, okay, so let's give it some temperature, or maybe I can just put it in there, actually. Uh, let's just put half a stack in, and that's going up. How much does it need? Oh, wait, no, that's the right amount of temperature. Oh, it's just going. Oh, okay. It didn't need temperature. <laughs> Uh, okay, and then we should get it. Yes, that's a nice quest. And we drink it. Ooh, the mead formed from great evil. You feel how you suddenly gain the ability to talk in any language used. And we should now be able to walk in here. Uh oh, let's get rid of this guy first. He's being a jerk. Let's get in here, and we can go to Alfheim. Right? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, now we have access to so much Dreamwood, and so much Dreamwood leaves. We should be able to get... Oh, they don't despawn. Oh man, I have to manually de do it. Uh, I wonder if I can uh, fortunate and get even more. Yeah, see, it hardly drops anything. Some sticks. There's a, there's a berry. Oops. Uh, mana glass vial. That's kind of useless charcoal. Okay. Yeah, alright. So, now we have access to all of the, the dream cherries that we could possibly ever want. As well as all of the dream wood we could possibly ever want. Um, and I don't think there's anything else that interesting in this dimension. Just dream wood and dream leaves. Oh, and cherries. Yeah, okay, so how many cherries do we have now? Seven! There we go. And I think the mobs tend to be harder here. Yeah, evokers and witches. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have come at night time. Uh, what is that? Oh, living rock! Wow, there's heaps of living rock as well. Oh, he's killed me. Oh, no. Where's the real guy? Did I get him? I'm poisoned. All right. Yeah, instead of stone, you get living rock. That's cool. Wait, what did it break into? Uh, that's shiver stone, isn't it? 
Why did I get shiver stone instead of living rock? That seems to be not correct. Even fortunate you only get shiver stone. Weird. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I think that'll do for now. I'm going to head back to the overworld. Oh yeah, another thing I noticed since the last episode, my Drigme died. I don't know how that happened. I have down here uh, um, a vacuumulator. <coughs> Excuse me. That was supposed to pick up everything. Uh, my, my hope was if the Drigme did happen to die, the vacuumulator would pick up his uh, Drigme charm and I wouldn't have to create a new one. But it didn't work. It didn't pick it up. Maybe he died too far away from it or something. And then it, like the charm despawned. I don't know what happened, but uh, yeah, he died. So I'm going to have to uh, make another one or something. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff, so maybe I don't need to make another one, but maybe I should. Anyway. Okay. Another thing I've been working on is um, automating all of the inputs to the deuterium plant. So to make the, uh, you need to have 256 rotational speed. And to do that, I needed to get two furnace generators going, which we have here. Uh, they make um, enough stress units to run this at 256 RPMs, which is the, the amount you need. Uh, I also needed, we also need um, pressure. So uh, I have another advanced liquid compressor that I made here that is running up to 10 bar. It said the minimum is 10. I think it runs up to 12 actually. I set it to, to turn on, yeah, to turn off when it's at 12, which should be enough. And then uh, this is molten sulfur, which is the other ingredient we need. And the final ingredient we need is power. So at the moment, I was just doing it with um, a, a solar panel, just a blazing one, even not even a fast one, just to see how much we get. And even with just a blazing solar panel, uh, you get quite a lot of power, uh, deuterium out of it. So if I turn the power off, then it stops producing. Um, to make the molten sulfur, I am doing it with, uh, so sulfur is kind of a weird recipe, I think. It's it's kind of missing a few uh, pieces, so let me show you what I mean. I have so much sulfur dust, I think from the sooty bee, I wanted to use sulfur dust instead of sulfur because sulfur, I only have 1.2 thousand. Um, to make uh, sulfur, molten sulfur out of sulfur is very easy, it's just a magma crucible. But to make it out of sulfur dust, it's basically not possible. Um, I guess maybe you can make sulfur dioxide and then an electrolyte. No, yeah, I don't know. No, even that doesn't work. Uh, yeah, so you can't just put it in a magma crucible. You got to actually put it into a foundry. You have to melt a foundry or a, or a, a, what are these things? Smeltery. So you can make it like that. And that's how I've ended up doing it because you can't even make the sulfur dust back into sulfur either. There's no recipe for it. So I have to do it, uh, yeah, the, the very slow way. This one, you can't make it using anything other than sulfur chunks. And we get the sulfur dust from, uh, I don't think we get it from crushing the ore. I can't remember now how we get it. If we do get it from crushing the ore. No, we get it from the sooty bee. I remember that. Uh, sooty honeycomb. Bitumen. And then, oh yeah, I think it's a out secondary output of crushing that. No, not the bitumen. The, the coal. Yeah, it comes from there. So basically every coal chunk is one sulfur dust. You get 50% chance of getting two. So yeah, this is how I made it. I made the, the smeltery. I made the smeltery controller a while ago. And then I just have it uh, not too big. It's, it's kind of big, I guess. And then it just goes into this uh, ender tank here. That's pretty much all we have time for. Between episodes, I'm going to uh, replace that create setup with these guys here, and we should be able to uh, get a lot more stuff coming. I can process the output of our uh, um, genie mine shaft. The Isnium ore, I'm still gonna put in that five times, uh, or the ore quintuple that we made before, but the other stuff we could just double it, that's fine. Um, it gets enough of it. Uh, one other thing I've been working on very, very slowly is this. This is going to be the uh, 
the mana, what is that thing called? Stellar mana. Stellar neutron activator. Yes. Um, it takes a bunch of ingredients. It's not too difficult, but um, it, the, the main thing is up here, these are mana input ports. We're going to need to put uh, four mana, uh, it has four of them, and they all need to be full for it to work at all. It's quite expensive to run. I, I tried this in creative before, and this, this is uh, probably going to be the toughest one to run because it needs a lot of mana. Um, and then, yeah, this one gives us the, uh, whatever that stuff is. Once we get this one done and this one, this one gives us tritium, I think. And then we can make the fusion uh, reactor. This is also kind of going to be expensive. This is, I think mostly this is okay. Uh, we should be able to do all of this stuff relatively straightforwardly now. Uh, yeah, this is kind of expensive. I have one of those. Uh, all right. So anyway, uh, hopefully in the next episode, we can set this up. Um, I was trying this out in creative and I could get it to about 3 million RF per tick, which is still not quite enough to run the, uh, this thing at, no, not this thing. This, yeah, this one, the SPS at full speed, it, it can, the full speed it can run at is 400 million. Uh, but I think even at two or three or even one million, uh, it still runs fast enough that well, that for us that that we'll ever ever possibly need. So um, yeah, I think that's what we'll be doing in the next episode, getting at, maybe not the SPS up, but we'll definitely be able to get the um, the fusion reactor going. I think. Um, so yeah, this thing has. Oh wait, why is it stopped? Oh, this thing is filled up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Um, I'll have to uh, just uh, drain that out. I think there's no need to keep... You can use spent nuclear waste, I think, for stuff. Uh, you can reprocess it, I think. No? Okay, you can't reprocess it. I thought you could reprocess it. Anyway. So, yeah, that's. I'll, I'll just have to drain that. But, yeah, we've got plenty of polonium pellets now. And once I drain that out, we're going to have a bunch more because we have this already quite backlogged. And I guess, wait, does that mean that this thing is full as well now? No, this quite hasn't backlogged yet. This is very slow, yeah, but it is getting more. Anyway, as I said, that's all we have time for. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!